Hey guys, so welcome back to your next lesson in Catalyst Concepts. So today we'll continue where we left off yesterday and uh, just study a little bit more about this new modern periodic table. Okay, so <clears throat> we knew we know that we uh, this modern periodic table uh, was formed by someone named H. J. Mosley. It has a similar groups and periods uh, formation, eighteen groups and seven periods. We saw a little bit more about something called the blocks inside of the periodic table. Right? We said that uh, each element ends up in a block based on where is the last electron of that atom entering, which subshell of it, right? So today we are going to look at a little bit more in depth about the groups and periods and how exactly they can signify something uh, about the element. All right. So uh, let me just draw a rudimentary form of the periodic table here. So it looks kind of like this. It's just a rough diagram. Yeah. So like this and the F block down here. Right, so this is something like what we saw yesterday, wherein we saw this is group number one goes all the way to group 18. And from here we start with the period, the first one, then the second and the third was here. And from the fourth, we've got the long form for four and five. And from six, we had these two uh, connections to these two blocks here, the F block, right? That is six and here would be seven. Okay, so let's talk about the significance over here. Uh, so this for us, what is what we call as the S block, if you remember, right? Uh, so if this is the S block over here, uh, I'll just mark it down over here, right? I'll just name it as S block. I just call this as P block. Mm, this I'll call D block. D. Mm. Right. And this was our finally F block. This is how I. Done. Right. I left you with a question yesterday. Uh, the question was that <clears throat> why exactly is the size of these blocks fixed? Okay. Why exactly is D for 10 and P is uh, these many and how that, right? So the answer lies in exactly what is the name of the block? For example, if I told you looking at this periodic table here, this is the S block. If you see S has one, two, it has only two columns, right? It has two groups. If you remember S, S subshell for us was like this, right? It could only hold two electrons. If you remember, we, we would draw it something like this, right? So each position within the S block is one group column for us. Okay. So when we say the first electron, we say this is the column for that group. Okay. When we say the second electron in S, this is that one. Okay, since S can hold two electrons, it'll have two groups because the atoms differ from each other only by one electron, right? So lithium has three electrons, beryllium has four. So uh, there'll be two S1, two S2. Okay, that is why they are the S block having only two uh, columns over here. Same way, let me come to the P block. If you count in P, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Uh, from boron all the way to neon. So now why exactly 6? Again, coming back to our diagram of P block, uh, sorry, P uh, subshell. So P subshell for us, we said there are three orbitals to it, Px, Py, and Pz. And we know each orbital can hold two, two electrons each. So two threes are six, right? If you remember, we drew P like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So with each electron, we find one, one column over here. So 
after beryllium which is boron right five electrons so for boron we'll write it like this 1s2 2s2 2p1 so this column corresponds to p1 okay this one will be p2 uh, carbon because that will be 2p2 then nitrogen 2p3 2p4 2p5 and 2p6 at which point p orbital is complete right then we'll have to move to the next one again comes back to the next orbital right similarly if you look at t d d for us was within one d subshell we had five orbital dxy dyz dzx dx square y square and d z square right we saw the orbital shapes and all of that again each of them holding two so there will be total of 10 that is why there are 10 columns exactly over here all right same goes for f f for us is 14 because it has seven so seven twos are 14 okay So this is why there are certain number of uh, uh, like groups within each block. Okay, simply connected to which uh, subshell we are talking about at that point of time. Now let's move ahead. Uh, talk about the significance of the groups. Okay. Um, now uh, we've already seen exactly how the blocks are organized. Okay. What happens when I look down across my uh, down? Uh, at my group okay if you look down at it i even see that over here i have the formula 1s1 for my hydrogen i have 2s1 for my lithium then i'll have 3s1 i'll have 4s1 okay so the way i keep going down down uh, in along this group over here the only thing that is changing is the first number okay if you remember, we use the formula n l to the power x for electronic configuration. The n value being the shell number, right? So when we look down in a group, we can see that the n value is increasing. Okay, for every row. So that means for us is that when you go down a group, you're adding a new, new, new shell every time you go down one position. Okay, if you remember, if this is hydrogen, we draw hydrogen like this, right? Shell number one. We say n equals to one for this. If I go to this one, which is lithium, we draw lithium kind of like this. Uh, I'm just going to draw it here. Do this. Yeah. So for us, lithium is drawn like this. So if I have lithium atom, hydrogen, helium, lithium, three. Now, if you see the shell number has increased by one when I go down. So uh, this is the second shell where n equals to two and n equals to one is already inside. So the outermost shell changes when we are going down a group or uh, directly saying the n value of it increases when you look down in a group. Okay. All right. So uh, one way you can describe it is like this. Every time you go down a group, one shell is added to the atom. A new shell is added to the atom. As simple as that. Okay. <clears throat> now let's come across that is going from left to right horizontal. We know that we are counting the numbers going from left to right. The atomic numbers. We start H equals to hydrogen 1, helium 2, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon. All the way we go left to right and that is how we increase. Right. So now, what exactly is special about this period? Okay, when you go left to right, is anything changing? Okay, so if I look at, uh, let's look at the second period over here. Uh, I'm going to erase this, this PD over here. All right. 
so if i talk about lithium beryllium boron carbon all of those i know lithium is 2s1 beryllium is 2s2 boron is 2s2 2p1 carbon is 2s2 2p2 right over here if you see the n value is not changing for it if i go all the way till the end over here there will be the element in neon okay so neon will be 2s2 2p6 okay every element from the first to last has the exact same n value if you see it is still 2 from lithium all the way to neon the moment this is full we go to the next one after neon there's nothing after it we go directly to the next level right so we say that when you are looking across a period you are trying to fill the whole shell you work with one shell and you fill it okay so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 let's compare it over here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay that is because second shell can hold eight electrons two in s six in p that is why there are eight eight elements in the second uh, let's say a uh, period in the first one there is only hydrogen and helium that is because in the first shell it can hold only two electrons that is 1s1 1s2 now if i come to the third one i know there is sp and d right so that should technically mean s is 2 p is 6 d is 10 there should be 2 plus 6 plus 10 18 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 there is only 8 so 3s2 3p 6 there is no 3d over here yet okay it should have been there but it is not because if we remember in our electronic uh, configuration there was a rule called off bar rule wherein we said that you need to go for energy level orbitals uh, first lower energy level orbitals first so when we come over here this sodium is 3s1 magnesium is 3s2 this one is 3p1 3p2 all the way to 3p6 after 3p6 we don't go to 3d1 we directly go to 4s1 okay so potassium is 4s1 calcium is 4s2 then we go to 3d1 because 4s although it's in the next level it has lesser energy than 3d so after filling 4s1 4s2 it will come down to 3d1 that is why over here we will start the d block so but already since we started the fourth shell we don't add it there we come to the next group which is horizontal okay so uh this will be 4s this is 3d this will be 4p again after 4p we will go to 5s then we will go to 3d over uh, 4d over here okay then again go to 5p again we'll go to 6s then we go to 5d which is lanthanum but at the same time from lanthanum we have the f values also so then after that over here from lanthanum we'll go to f which is this over here so if you see 57 is here but 58 is here cerium all the way to lutetium So this is the fourteen elements that come in the F block because F can hold fourteen. So instead of joining it there, they added it down here. Okay, so you should read it like this: cesium, uh, then you go to barium, then uh, lanthanum, cerium. Uh, all of these elements from here all the way up till here, fifty-eight to seventy-one. Okay, once you finish seventy-one, you go to seventy. Okay, so that's how we are going to count it. We go to six S, then we go to four uh, F. Okay, F starts in the fourth shell if you remember. S P D F, right? So that is the 
fourth shell. So the fourth shell F will be filled only when you come to the sixth element, or sixth row over here. Okay. So this is how the groups and uh, periods are arranged for the uh, this thing. All right. So in the next class, we are going to talk about uh, what properties we can look or what trends we can look at in when you talk about the periodic table. I'll stop here for now and I'll see you again in the next class. Thank you so much.